Hey guys, we're looking at 8.1 weathering and erosion, and we're going to look at the processes that can shape our surface. So, two things that you may have talked about before, weathering and erosion. So, we're going to do just a quick review of them. So, weathering and erosion are both going to work together to wear down our surface and to move material around. So, weathering itself is the process that's going to break down rocks. So, that breaks down different materials on our surface. So, in this little Venn diagram that you have at the bottom of page 3, this is looking at weathering, so it's literally the breaking down of rocks into smaller pieces and even into uh, tiny sediments like sand. So there are two kinds of weathering. The first is mechanical weathering. Mechanical weathering is also called physical weathering. So it's a process where rocks are physically broken down into smaller pieces. Again, it's also called physical weathering. And some examples are freezing, thawing, pressure, the ice wedging that you saw in the picture on the first slide. So this is an example showing you mechanical weathering that's done by wind from the wind abrading and basically blowing sand up against the rock so it weathered this sandstone and here's an example of how tree roots can actually um, use pressure to push down into rocks and you can see there's a tree root that's growing right here into the stratigraphy of the rocks so it can actually force rocks apart breaking them was which is what you see kind of right here and then ice wedging, you see right here on the surface, uh, this rock used to be actually together at one point. And then when water would seep down in between in small fissures, small little openings in the rock, when it freezes, when the temperatures get low enough, then um, it expands. So the water will expand. And over time, it'll cause a large indention like you see right there. Chemical weathering is the second one, and chemical is going to use chemical changes, chemical reactions, in order to break down rocks. We looked at this picture several times in reference to acid rain. So it is weathering of the surface of this limestone. The statue is made of limestone, and that is um, going to basically eat away at the surface. So where you had the face, the different facial features, you can't see that anymore. And again, like the robe, the... Um, dress that this person is wearing it's eroded completely so it changes the surface a lot and then one other thing you may have heard about before is caves so stalactites and stalagmites in cave features so if you've ever been to Linville Caverns that's an example so basically those form from carbonic acid from uh, carbon dioxide in the air mixing with the different um, like with water basically forming carbonic acid and then that will eat away at the limestone in the caves and can also form a solution making it drip and form these features at the bottom these stalagmites so that is another example of chemical weathering uniformitarianism is a big science word and it is not anything difficult to understand. So basically uniformitarianism is saying that something is uniform. If something is the same. What's the same? Well, geologic processes. So it's just a principle, the geologic principle, that says that the processes that shaped our surface in the past continue to shape our surface now today, currently. And that's going to include processes like weathering and erosion, deposition, abrasion, volcanic activity, plate tectonics, so all those kind of things that you've talked about or heard about before or that we're currently talking about. So the stuff that happened in the past still happens and shapes our surface today. And this picture is a picture of a huge valley, so this, um, like Grand Canyon for example, so you have a huge valley here and this whole land area used to be together and now it's not and it's been eroded by water and you see the remnants of some of that water down below in the valley. Oxidation, ooh, I think I've heard that word before. We talked about oxidation when we studied chemistry. Oxidation is going to be chemical changes, specifically rust. Anytime that you see the word or hear the word oxidation, you should think rust. So oxidation is chemical change in not only different materials that we talked about in chemistry, but in rocks as well. So that is going to be where you have um, iron, specifically the mineral iron or the element iron that's in different rocks. Um, and that will combine with oxygen in the air 
and that will oxidize that will cause it to look like it's rusting so this huge rock layer here all this red stuff is oxidation of that shale s-h-a-l-e of this material that you have here and another example you see a lot around here is mud we have lots of red mud and that mud when it's exposed to the air is going to turn the bright red color, the red orange color that we see so much. So if you're ever outside, chances are if you're doing yard work or if you're um, doing dirt bikes or whatever, playing football, you might end up getting stains on your clothes from this red mud and it's oxidized. So here's a Venn diagram. If you didn't see that earlier, just so you can see weathering, which we talked about breaking down rocks. Erosion is going to be moving rocks around, so moving rocks from one place to another. And both of those processes can be done by wind, ice, gravity, water, running water, um, freezing water, the form of ice, glaciers, another example of ice. So those are the processes, weathering and erosion, and the agents of weathering and erosion are going to be wind, ice, gravity, and water. And then the last thing is looking at this graph. So this graph is on page 12 in your lab notebook. It's looking at the weathering rates of limestone. And I wanted you to see a picture of it that is not in black and white. So I've labeled stone A as blue. So you see that top line is stone A. And then this kind of pinkish purple color, fuchsia, is stone B. And that's the bottom line here. So on the x-axis, we have time in hundreds of years. And then we have on the y-axis the thickness of the stone the amount of the stone in millimeters that is lost due to weathering so you can look at your paper and answer the questions by looking at this color graph so you can see that these are going by 200 years and then this is going up by two millimeters so for example on stone a the top line at 200 years it would be at approximately two, not quite two, but almost two millimeters of limestone that has weathered. And then at 200 years, stone B is going to be about right here. So that's probably about one. So that should give you a good frame of reference to get started on that. Thanks, guys.